Ooh, spooky stuff there. Right, it's my favourite time of Gamescom. I am here with Ralph Fulton from Playground Games. Ralph, how you doing, mate? I'm good. How are you? What do you think of our stage this year? I it's love it. Nice. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good look for the show, right? Yeah, it's... absolutely. I wish we were a bit closer to your McLaren Senna over there. Thank you for yeah. bringing it back again. You know you're not allowed any closer than you've been. <laughs> You're right. There's you know, I, got, rules. I got in at E3 and then got into trouble retrospectively because apparently like everyone else was starting to try and get into it. And I was yeah. like, it wasn't my fault. It's, it's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Forza Horizon 4, it's coming up very fast now. Isn't it? Yeah, we're on the train now, aren't we? Um, so yeah, we're here at Gamescom. We have got uh, a bunch of things that we're, we're showing people for the first time, a bunch of things we're talking about for the first time, as well as obviously recapping uh, some of the big things about the game. There's so many big, exciting things about the game. As we talked about E3, it's in Britain, which is awesome. Um, Seasons is a huge component uh, of the game. Mm -hmm. We're doing a little bit about, about that, showing people more of what the world looks like in different seasons. Uh, but yeah, we've got big news uh, about uh, how the online works in the game and specifically we're talking about some of our uh, our truly competitive pvp modes in the game wicked well let's talk about some of that we've got some nice gameplay up here nice uh, nice cozy there um, good, oh it's it? lovely that car actually i think that's actually one of the cars that you will you will get fairly on uh, early on in the game and honestly it's just a blast to drive and and yeah i think what we're looking at here right now is um, a pretty newly revamped uh, PvP multiplayer mode okay. um, called Team Adventure. So if you are familiar with uh, with previous Horizon games, as I know you are, absolutely, um, online adventure has been a has been the way you go uh, and compete with others uh, in Horizon games online. Um, and the format has been broadly similar for the last couple of games in that it's all about the open world. It's all pretty seamless, you know, so you don't have to wait in lobbies. You're always driving, you're always in control of your car. And it takes you on a bit of a tour around the world and you'll do races or you'll do games or you'll do a mixture of both depending on what you've chosen. Um, that format is great. What we've done uh, this time is, is a couple of things. One, we have made it like genuinely skill-based, genuinely competitive, you know, so the person uh, who is first will be in first, you know. Skills doesn't augment that anymore, clean racing doesn't augment that anymore. Okay. So it's a real test of skill um, in, in this kind of competition. And then the second one um, is reflected in the name. It's now called Team Adventure. That's what we're looking at here. Um, so everything about this mode is now team-based. Right. So the points are based on how your teammates are performing just absolutely. as much as about how you're performing and as I well, think, right? I think that's absolutely key and it's the it's the root of why we've made this this the decision and gone in this direction. Love the that. problem with, with online racing sometimes is that um, if somebody gets out in front, they're pretty certain they're going to win. You know, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. Um, I, I, and other people can, you know, become a little bit less engaged in the game. You know, maybe they quit out of the game. Nobody wants that. It's not good for anybody in the game. With team racing, you know, maybe you're not the fastest in the field, but even just battling for second last, you know, you could get the points which, you know, are pivotal for, you, for your team that actually you end up winning as a team. So everybody can make their contribution, kind of regardless of skill. Um, you know, everybody gets to make their contribution and help the team. Uh, and now everything is team-based uh, within the, the game. You know, to, to play into that, I love the communication that you've now got, right? You've got these uh, little emotes and communication lines that you can send Absolutely. to your team. Absolutely. Quick right? chat is, is new for the game. Um, it's brilliant. In, uh, in the shared world, you know, you're just tooling around the world. It's great to, you know, to chat to other people. You get a whole different set of uh, quick chat um, messages that you can equip for a game like this, for a playground game. We're, we're watching what is uh, Survivor mode right. Uh, right now. So you have a different set of messages that you can fire off, as I'm sure you'll see some of the players in, in this footage doing, um, just to add uh, a little bit of a gamesmanship, you know, a little bit of a, a fun to the proceedings. But it's important to say as well, like if players, for whatever reason, aren't motivated by competition or PvP or they just want to get into the beautiful world you've created but not have other players in there, they can set up that way, right? Ab absolutely, yeah. And I think, you know, we really think about making Horizon as a game for everyone. You know, we have so many different player types, so different, many different player tastes. And yeah, you're absolutely right. There's some people that say to me, I, you know, I just don't want to play in a shared world. I want to play offline on my own. You can absolutely do that. It's as easy as clicking a button in the pause menu. Um, and, and then you, were, you will play an experience very similar to Forza Horizon 3, you know, so your world will be populated with drive guitars uh, rather than real players. Um, and it's as easy as, you know, just pressing that button. That's also great for you and I, you know, if our um, 
maybe our internet goes down at home. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of games, they're going to kick you out to the pause menu or to the main menu when that happens. Uh, Horizon 4 deals with it very elegantly, very seamlessly, and just basically transitions you uh, into being uh, in an offline state for as long as your, you know, your internet is down. All right, good. That, so flipping back to PvP and competition, right. what other modes have you got in there for those players? So, so you will have, uh, in fact, you just said to me off stage, you you, uh, you recognize that as Infected. Right. It's actually a team-based version of Infected. So what we've, we've gone and done, racing takes care of itself. Team-based racing, you kind of understand how that's going to work. Uh -huh. um, if you think about our games like Infected and King and Flag Rush, what we really wanted to do was introduce an element of team play, of cooperation, so that it's not just about you know the guy who tags the most uh, and, and infected people. Um, rather, it makes it about the team, so that there's a, you know that teamwork aspect, and the best team is the one that triumphs in the end. We've done that with all the all the modes there. So infected becomes survivor. Um, it's now a round-based game. So one team starts as the survivor, one team starts as the infected. Right from the start, the well one goes at the other team. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the twist is that if you are a survivor and you get infected, one of your teammates who's not infected can heal you. Nice. So there's a real back and forth sort of push-pull uh, dynamic to the game, which is totally new. It's incredibly fun. We've done that with each of the games to make sure that you know teams want to work together, they communicate. And I really see that when we launch this game, I think there's going to be people, not everybody, but some people who really go all in on teams. You know, they build their own team, their, their identity, their team badge, the outfits they wear when they compete. Right. Um, and for them, there's a Grandmaster League, you know, which is like the best players in the world. I think a lot of people are going to be striving to get there. I can't wait to see how quickly somebody actually gets up to that skill level. Fantastic. So you've obviously created this amazing world, beautiful, historic Britain. Tell us more about the shareable world and how you can actually share that with other players. Yes, absolutely. So um, when you're when you're driving around um, and you know you haven't opted out, as I as I described, basically we're just matchmaking you with uh, with players. So you're you are seeing other players where previously you'd have seen drive avatars. And I, you know, I think drive avatar technology has served us incredibly well. Um, it does that brilliant thing of injecting personality into your world. How can we get more personality into our into our world? It's by actually having real people. That's that's our genuine belief um, about how that works. And so, and we see this in the studio as we scale up our testing and fill our world uh, with, with real people. Real people do crazy things, they do fun things, they do unexpected things. Um, and even if you only play like in the mindset of a solo player, you just go about your races, you do your PR stunts and what have you, yeah. um, I think they'll add some color, some vibrancy uh, to the world, which just wasn't there before. Fantastic. Ralph, thank you so much for your time as always. Have a great week at Gamescom. And personally, I just wanted to say thank you for putting Edinburgh in the game. My pleasure. A, a dream come true. Genuinely. Thanks.